Hello, my name's Simon Wardley, and I'm the inventor of Wardley Maps. In the first session, I talked about the origin of Wardley Maps, and also uh, the difference between a map and a graph. In this session, I'd like to talk about patterns. Now, to explain patterns, I'm going to use an example. And one of my favorite examples, this is James Finley, and the former CIO of HS2, High Speed Rail. This is a big, heavy engineering project. Now, James had a problem. That problem was he needed to build the entire railway in a virtual world. And the reason why you would do this is it's easier, or I should say cheaper, to dig up a virtual world and go, whoops, we've got that wrong, than it is the actual English countryside. So he started off with a graph of this entire system. Now, the problem for James was how do I manage this? Typically in government, what we tended to do was outsource all the components, and we'd often group them together in lots, things that we would call logical structures. So for example, we might say engineering. All of these bits sound very engineering, so we'll put them in one lot and that will be one contract. And then this stuff sounds like user experience, so we'll put that in another contract and we'll outsource it to someone else, and this stuff is sort of back office, so that'll be another lot. The problem with this is, is these projects had a tendency of huge cost overruns. So James did something different. James sat down on a Sunday afternoon and mapped it out, starting off with who are the core users, what are their needs, what are the components involved, how evolved are those components. And this was back in 2012, and then he sent me the map and said, how do you manage an environment that looks like this? Now, fortunately, I'd come across this problem before, back in 2006. One of the things you've got to know about maps is that all the components are evolving. They're moving from left to right if there is supply and demand competition. As they evolve, they move from what we call the uncharted space, where things are chaotic, uncertain, unpredictable, exciting, and new, to becoming more commodity-like. So you think of something like computing. We started off with the Z3 in 1943. We've got custom-built systems like Lions Electronic Office, the first products, IBM 650, and then 2006, we got more utility compute with Amazon, EC2. So everything's evolving, and as it evolves, its characteristics change. Now, because of this, you need to use different methods of management. For example, extreme programming, agile development is very good on the left-hand side of the map because it allows for change. And the thing you need on the left-hand side of the map is to reduce the cost of change because change will happen. It's uncertain. It's uncharted. On the right-hand side of the map, you don't want change. You want to reduce deviation, which is why things like Six Sigma and outsourcing work well. In the middle, you want to learn about the thing, which is why systems like Lean, using Scrum, MVP, Minimal Viable Product, those are ideal. So what you've got are three different methods, and you simply apply that to a map. So on the left-hand side, we basically uh, build in-house with agile techniques. In the middle, off-the-shelf products, or and we're going to use something like Lean. On the right-hand side, we will outsource with utility providers. And that's exactly what James did. And this project ended up in front of the Public Accounts Committee because it delivered ahead of schedule and way under budget. Now, one thing to note here, agile is a very popular term today. And there is a world of difference between being agile and using agile. So using agile is like using methods like extreme programming, which are appropriate for part of the map. Whereas being agile is about using appropriate methods which means outsourcing things when they should be outsourced, off-the-shelf products when they need to use off-the-shelf, 
and building in-house with agile techniques when it needs to be agile techniques. Now let's go back and think about the original graph and that whole approach of outsourcing. If we take the first contract structure, lot one, infrastructure, and let's just pull that out and put it onto a map. I can tell you this contract is going to fail before we've even signed it. And the reason why it will fail is because on the right hand side, we can actually define the components and so we can efficiently treat things in a contract. But on the left hand set side, change is the norm. Which means if you try and define it in a contract, you will always incur excessive change control cost. Now I've poisoned your minds here with this technique and just to demonstrate it, I'm going to give you a graph uh, for a self-driving car, which I've translated into Elvish. I'm going to ask you a question. Should we outsource or build our own component A and component B? Now looking at that graph, I think most of you would agree it's impossible to answer that question, but that's the decisions we make almost every day. Let me convert it now into a map. Should we outsource or build our own A or B? I think most of you can see we should probably outsource A, build our own B. And that's the difference between a map and a graph and the exposure of context. Now, the use of appropriate methods is a pattern. And these patterns come from the fact that we use maps pre-mortem and post-mortem. So just to explain, before we start something, we create a map and we challenge what we're going to do. And that's the pre-mortem part. Then we go build it. And afterwards, we use the map and we look at what happened. And that's the post-mortem learning. And it's through that post-mortem learning we discover patterns. And there are three basic types of patterns. There are climactic patterns. These are things which you cannot control. They are caused by supply and demand competition, but they're useful for anticipation. And then there are two other patterns that you can control. One is known as doctrine, universally useful patterns, which we will explain. And the third one is gameplay. Uh, these are more context-specific patterns. But to begin with, we're going to start in the next session with anticipation. Thank you.